What's up guys, Jeff Jorgensen here. Got a new lens, got a new haircut. I'm ready for this freaking video. For those of you out there who don't know how to swim or are uncomfortable swimming, especially those who have aquaphobia, this video is gonna be for you. Okay, so what is aquaphobia or how do you deal with it? So I, on a normal basis with my actual job as a rescue swimmer instructor, and I actually teach water survival to adults who don't know how to swim, who have never been in the water, who just are uncomfortable. And it is very, very, very hard teaching adults these, what seems like fundamental things to some people, but it's really not, okay? I wanna go over a couple of things. So first thing is, Aquaphobia is basically you're afraid of the water. Just in general, it scares you to death, especially deep water. Deep water probably especially frightens you. Now, how do you get over that? So they have found a process with arachnophobia and all that stuff, and it's basically the small steps to get you comfortable in that environment so that phobia doesn't take over you. So like, for example, with arachnophobia, what they did with people who were afraid of spiders is they slowly got them comfortable with just the tarantula in the room. And then from there, moved to the tarantula being out of the cage and then slowly moving to, you know, the tarantula being able to walk across their hand or their gloved hand to them petting the tarantula and having it walk over their hand. And most of these people were able to get over that in a less than a few hours, which is crazy to me that like spiders are still kind of creepy to me, but they were able to get over that hump because they made these small incremental steps to improve upon not being afraid of the water. It's a monumental task, how do you get over it, okay? So a couple things I wanna tell you is, and going on further from this, swimming. How do you go from being afraid to get in the water to being able to swim? I deal with this on a regular basis with my water survival students. And basically what I see is, they have a hard time separating the task. So again, if you're going, you just need to get comfortable in the water. That breaks it down into very, very small chunks. Whether it's bl bubble blowing, whether it's just bouncing up and down the water, it seems really stupid, but all of those things, start that in the shallow end, maybe go to maybe you're a little bit, maybe mouth level. Okay, bouncing up and down, putting your face in the water, exhaling in the water, getting used to the buoyancy on your chest. All of these things through repetition will breed a comfortability within the water, okay? This plays into what they call procedural learning, okay? First time you ever drove a car, the first time you ever played a video game, the first time you did anything, rode a bike, if, uh, it goes into all aspects of life. In order to learn that thing, you had to take it step by step. When you first learned how to drive, you had to say, okay, I need to put this much pressure on the brake, I need to take my foot off the brake, I need to put my this much pedal in, I need to make sure it's in drive, the mirrors, all these things. You're consciously thinking of these things, and that's in your prefrontal cortex, this part right here. You're having to consciously activate those parts of your brain and really focus on them. Now when you drive, you ride a bike, you do any of those things, you're not thinking of that. You're just doing it. You've moved, moved this concentrated effort, this focal point from normal consciousness to almost an unconsciousness or a procedural way of doing it. You just jump in the car, put it in drive and go. You don't think I gotta put it in drive. You move it to the position it has to be. And this plays into the further end of the spectrum when people talk about, for example, uh, driving hypnosis. When they leave somewhere and they're so used to driving it, they just show up to work. That can be super dangerous, especially when they're, you know, there's other circumstances like accidents that act upon them really quickly. This can be dangerous. So how do we harness this and play it into swimming? Okay, once we get comfortable in the water, and like I said, it's not, don't just jump into the deep end. That's the worst thing you can do. 
slowly work your way in, slowly get comfortable blowing bubbles, jumping up and down, moving back and forth, running. Notice how the water acts on your hands back and forth, moving them back and forth in the water. Get comfortable in the water. Once you're comfortable in the water, floats, work on floats, work on how your body actually hits buoyancy in the water. How when you fill your lungs up with air, the moment you fill your lungs up with air, you have a little bit more buoyancy. And when you exhale that, you'll start to sink down. Get to know how that works on your body. Then from there, you break down the different strokes into their fundamental pieces. Whether that's how you move your hand, you break down the upper body, so how you pull with your arms, whether it's breaststroke or an elementary, uh, elementary backstroke or a side stroke. A butterfly's a little bit more advanced, don't just jump into that. But you need to break these movements down piece by piece. And there's tools you can use that I'll link in the description below, such as a pull buoy, a P-U-L-L, -L, and I just spelt it how I look at it. So what would that be? P-U-L-L, -L, a pull buoy. So you're pulling it through the water. So you put that between your legs, it immobilizes your feet, and it forces you to focus on how your arms are actually working in the water. The other thing I would highly recommend is a kickboard. Pull buoy, kickboard. Kickboard, it allows you to hold on to the end of the board in different grasps, and this board floats in the water just like the pull buoy, and it allows you to focus on your kick, whether that's a frog kick, a scissor kick, or a flutter kick. All of these things, it makes you focus on what you're doing with your legs, what you're doing with your arms. Then to build strength, as you get the technique down, you really wanna focus on that technique first, okay? Once the technique is down, you work on strength. That's when you get into fins and hand paddles, okay? You don't wanna jump into fins and hand paddles if your technique is wrong. If your technique is wrong when it comes to swimming, using hand paddles or swim fins will exacerbate this and exaggerate your, your obviously weak points. So work on technique first, then go into actually building that strength, okay? So the hand paddles will make it harder to actually swim through the water, which will build those muscles and that muscle memory with pulling, and their fins will make your legs stronger with what you're doing. Just make sure you're not using your fins for frog kick or scissor kick. It really doesn't work that well. Once you build that strength and all that, then you work on conditioning. More conditioning with that strength training, and always make sure you're working that technique, and the best swimmers in the world still work on technique. I still work on technique, because there's always something you can improve on. There's a great book out there called Total Immersion. I'm gonna link it in the description below. This is a great resource for you to use if you're just getting into swimming as an adult or as a kid, or if you wanna teach your kid. It's a great way to break down all these fundamental things that I talked about that will make you comfortable swimming, make you a better swimmer. And even if you know how to swim, there's a lot of things that maybe you've done wrong throughout the years that you didn't know you were doing wrong. And this will point these out. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'm gonna come out with a lot more. I'm gonna do more and more advanced swimming techniques and I got some fun stuff coming out. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and I will check you next time.